भगवान मेरी हालत तो देखो मैं बुरी तरह भीग गया हूँ एक तो मुझे शिकायत नहीं करनी चाहिए आखिरकार ताजा पानी स्कॉच विस्की बनाने की कला में एक महत्वपूर्ण सामग्री है एक्वा मीठा या गैली भाषा में एक और अहम सामग्री है जौ जिसे पानी में भिगोया जाता है और अंकुर निकलने के लिए यहाँ मोल्टिंग हाउस में लाया जाता है मोल्टमेन जौ को पलटता है जिससे वह साफ लेती है और बढ़ती है क्या आपको यह महक आ रही है दोस्तों कि यहाँ भट्टी में सुखाई जा रही मोल्टेड बार्ली की महक है खास तौर पर कहें तो यह जमते पीठ की महक है पीठ कोयले का एक कच्चा रूप है और किसी विस्की के खास अंतिम फ्लेवर को कारक होता है मुझे ही गर्मी लग रही है या वाकई यहाँ गर्मी बढ़ रही है ओ ये आप है मैं बस थोड़ा आराम कर रहा था आप कह सकते हैं कि कुछ कुछ यहाँ मॉल्ट भंडार में रखे मॉल्ट की तरह यह इंतजार कर रहा है अपने समय की प्रतीक्षा कर रहा है अपनी ताकत जुटा रहा है ठीक है बस यही सब कुछ है आगे और ऊपर खैर नीचे से कंटेनर है जहां हम शुद्धतम स्कॉटिश जल को अपनी मिल से निकले क्रस्ट में मिलाते हैं मिश्रण की चीनी घुल जाने से एक मीठा द्रव बनता है जिसे वॉट कहते हैं इसके बाद वॉट को ठंडा करके अगली मंजिल के लिए तैयार करते हैं मैश्रण में बचे अवशेषों को पशुओं का चारा बनाने के लिए इस्तेमाल किया जा सकता है वोट देखने में कुछ खास नहीं कर सकता लेकिन मैं आपको यह मिलाता हूँ तो आप मुझसे पूछेंगे कि वह जादू सामग्री क्या है जो एक मॉल से बने चीनीदार एक ऐसी चीज में बना देगी जिसमें यू कहें कि थोड़ी ज्यादा तमक होगी ये रहा इसका जवाब ये खमीर है लेकिन विस्फोटक जीव के महत्व को कई कम करके नहीं आता जा सकता और ये वो जगह है जहां जादू वाकई शुरू होता है ये वॉशबैक है जहां खमीर मोट से मिलता है और चीनी अल्कोहल में बदल जाती है इस प्रक्रिया को इन वन कहते हैं करनी और झाग का एक उफलता हुआ भवन और जब इसके फैल कर गिरने का खतरा हो जाए तो ऊपर के स्विचर ब्लेड्स इसे काबू में रखते हैं यहाँ ज्यादा गहरी सांस न ले यहाँ उठने वाली तीखी भाप तगड़ा झटका ले सकती है इस बिंदु पर अल्कोहल की मात्रा अब भी काफी कम है इसे बढ़ाए जाने की जरूरत है आसमन के दौरान हम ऐसा करेंगे और अब ध्यान दीजिए द्रव को बर्तन वाले भवके में गर्म किया जाता है और चूंकि अल्कोहल कम तापमान पर उबलता है इसलिए यह पानी से अलग हो जाता है भाप नली में ऊपर उठती है और फिर ठंडे पानी में डूबे तांबे की कुंडली द्वारा ठंडी और संगलित होकर तो वापस द्रव में लौट आती है इस कुंडली को वार्म कहते हैं यहाँ हम ठंडा होने और संगलन की प्रक्रिया को काम करता हुआ देख सकते हैं अब द्रव को लो वाइल्स कहते हैं लेकिन इसमें अल्कोहल की मात्रा बढ़ाने के लिए इसे और आसन करना पड़ता है और ये होता है स्प्रिट स्टील में हर डिस्टिलरी में अपने खास आकार का तांबे के बर्तन वाला भक्का होता है यह भी इस बात का एक कारक है कि हर डिस्टिलरी स्कॉच विस्की का अपना खास फ्लेवर बनाती है 
इस समय तक द्रव इतना प्रबल हो चुका होता है कि इसे कस्टम एवं एक्साइज द्वारा ताले में बंद करके रखना पड़ता है यहाँ स्पिरिट सेफ में स्टिल मैन अपना जादू चलाता है वह तय करता है कि फर्स्ट रन यानी आसमान से निकलने वाली शराब के पहले हिस्से और आखिरी हिस्से या फैंट्स को दोबारा आसमान के लिए कब वापस भेजे इस बीच मिडिल कट या रन के मुख्य हिस्से को स्पिरिट रिसीवर में भेजे जाता है लेकिन ये अब भी स्कॉच विस्की नहीं है अभी इसमें काफी वक्त लगेगा ये पीपे कम से कम तीन साल तक भूमिगत रहेंगे कुछ तो बार है या पचास साल तक ऐसे ही रहेंगे परिपक्वता की इस अवधि में जिन पीपों में विस्की रखी जाती है उनकी लकड़ी के कारण उसका खास फ्लेवर और बढ़ जाता है और उसके स्वच्छ रंग में सुनहरी रंगत आ जाती है पहले जो सिर्फ पानी और बाली था अब जादुई ढंग से परिपक्व होकर स्कॉच विस्की बन जाता है वास्तविक होती हुई विस्की की गंध एक पीपे की दो प्रतिशत तक शराब हर साल हो जाती है इसे फरिश्तों का हिस्सा कहते हैं मैं भी फरिश्तों में शामिल होने जा रहा हूं स्लॉन जवा चियर्स Okay, my name is Gordon. I'll be your tour guide for about the next half an hour. Okay. Now we're going to start with single malt whiskey, which is very simply a whiskey produced in a single distillery with malted barley as its only cereal. Okay. Now a nice way to think about this is to think about the country of Scotland itself. All the flavors in your whiskey must, by law, be completely natural. So those flavors come from things like the ingredients. Distillation, the cask your whiskey is stored in, but also where your whiskey is actually produced. So we actually divide Scotland into five single malt regions. So starting here, we've got the Lowlands, moving up into the Highlands, Speyside, back round to Isla, and lastly Campbelltown. Okay, now Campbelltown, you're going to see, is just going to slip off the map. Okay, now there are three lovely distilleries here as well. But it's a very small part of the industry. So we're going to be focusing mainly on our four largest regions. You've got these cards here as well. As you have, you spelled them by any chance? Yeah, you might have guessed. Oh. Actually, a number of cards. Um, so as I go through, I'll prompt you to turn to each section, and you're very welcome to just give it a wee rub, a wee smell, if you like. It just gives you an aroma. <laughs> now there is a overlap. Um, it's also worth pointing out. Uh, but these are a bit exaggerated, so just bear in mind your whiskey is a liquid version of what's in here. Okay, it's just a rough indication to the diversity of flavors you actually get in single malts. So we're going to start with where we are just now, which is the Lowland region, and the Lowlands is about the bottom third of the country. So it runs between the border of England and this imaginary line, which is cutting just through Stirling. These red circles here are your single malt. Distilleries. In terms of flavour, Lowland whiskies are traditionally very light, crisp, and refreshing. So they're often recommended, uh, maybe as aperitifs, or if you're looking for something with just a bit of a milder edge to it. So if you'd like to start with the green Lowland section, have a wee smell there, see what you're getting. Okay. Do you find this maybe a bit sick? Oh, Lemon, grapefruits. Uh, you probably want to say kitchen cleaner or air freshener. Yeah. Uh, basically, take them with a pinch of salt. Anything very kind of crisp, quite refreshing. Now, if we move north of that line, we have our largest region, which is also where I'm from. It's the Highlands of Scotland. As you can see, it is pretty vast. So it's an incredible. Incredibly diverse area. Um, in here, you've got high mountains, locks, rivers, plenty of coastline as well. So that comes along with a lot of different styles of whiskey. So you've got very light, very sweet whiskies in the Highlands. If you move out towards the coastal areas, that's where you get more peat. So that's where you're going to get typically very smoky whiskies as well. The yellow Highland section, however, is a bit sweeter. Any guesses for the Highlands? Did hear it vanilla. 
couple, yeah. Something like, often you're custard. Uh, yeah, custard. It's meant to be like vanilla, honey, vanilla. caramel, anything in a solution. Okay. And now again, it's a very diverse area. So whiskies can be incredibly different from this. But of course, they, your Highland malts can be a bit milder, a bit sweet. Now there's actually another region in the Highlands as well, which is Speyside. Um, it's located just up here. You see, it's quite small. It's home to just under half of every single malt distillery in Scotland, which is exactly why it's a region to itself. Typically, it produces very fruity whiskies, so that could be like apples and pears, maybe even dried fruits like raisins, quite rich flavours as well. The blue space side section, I will warn you, is actually quite unusual. Um, basically, it smells like bubble gum. Some folks get bananas as well. It's going to be a Or pear drops, that's quite a British uh, aroma, but if you're used to that, you might get that as well. Basically, anything in the middle. As well as those kind of lighter fruits, again, you get dry fruits, maybe even with nuts, spices, toffee, really prominent in a sherry cask materials. So we've got one region left, and it's an <laughs> island, the fifth largest island in Scotland, which is Isla. Now, Isla is home to about 3,500 people, it is okay. quite small, but there are eight single malt distilleries here as well, and the reason for this is that they have a very prolific supply of peat. So Isla is very well known for producing some of Scotland's smokier whiskies. Not all smoky whiskies come from Isla, and it's certainly not the only flavour that's going to come in this region, but overall, it is their most distinctive quality. So Red Isla section, it's a bit like a bonfire, pipe tobacco, something like that. Okay. If it smells quite unusual, uh, a good thing to put in mind is something like blue cheese, your smoked peat, a bit of a nice pairing you might have with a smoked whiskey. Um, under the peat, you've got things like earthiness, saltiness, sweetness sometimes as well. So very complicated, uh, but overall it's going to be quite smoky. Suggests a blend is basically a mixture of different types of whiskey. You've got two different types of whiskey within a blend. The first one is malt whiskey. The second one is grain whiskey. Now you've got two differences between a malt and a grain whiskey. The first one, unsurprisingly, is actually the ingredients. Within malt whiskey, you've only got one type of grain, which is malted barley. In grain whiskey, on the other hand, you could basically have any cereal, and most predominantly, it's either wheat or corn with a very small amount of cracking corn. Secondly, it goes through a different distillation process. It's produced on something called a coffee still, that has nothing to do uh, with the hot drink. It was patented by Aeneas Coffee in 1831. It is huge. Um, it's quite hard to make out here, but it's actually about six to eight stories high. It's often known as a continuous still as well. It runs continuously and will produce about 10 bottles of whiskey a second. Now, in the same time, you'd only get about five milliliters of single malt whiskey, so it's a pretty vast difference in quantity. Basically, this faster distillation makes the whiskey very light. That's what makes grain whiskey perfect for blending. So the idea with the blend is you're starting off with the grain whiskey as kind of this light base component. Into that, you get more flavor, more complexity by introducing various single malt whiskies as well. And what you'll get is basically the best balance of flavors between all those individual whiskies. Not a very easy task. It might take you 10 to 15 years of training to be able to blend whiskies together. And what the most complicated aspect of blending is, is actually ensuring consistency. Now within a blend, you might actually have up to 50 individual casks, all of which can change very slightly each year. Now of course, you don't want that to affect the whiskey you're going to buy, you want that to be consistent. So you constantly have to change the recipe, add new whiskies, take whiskies out, or simply change the quantities. So although you get exactly the same flavors in a blend each year, it's actually a very different composition of casks which go into putting that together. Okay. The same process is done with single malt whiskey as well, just of course very complex with blends, simply because you've got all these different components. And overall, a good way to think about blending is it's a bit like putting together a orchestra. Okay, so within a single malt, you've got those lovely, very robust flavors. 
With a blend, you basically want the opposite. You don't want anything to overpower the entire whiskey, but rather you want everything to work together in harmony. Before we get started with our tasting, there's a question we're asked pretty much every day. How should you drink your whiskey? Only one answer, any way you like it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everyone's different, every whiskey's different. So of course you can have it exactly as it is. Adding a bit of water to your whiskey is going to change the characteristics that you're going to get through. Uh, you may slightly prefer it with water, you may absolutely hate it, it's very much personal taste. If you want to have whiskey over ice in a long mixer, in a cocktail, please go ahead. Lovely ways to enjoy it. They're not the best conditions for examining your whiskey. That's just why we're not doing them today. Okay, what we're going to focus on are more of the connoisseuring steps, if you like, just for focusing on our whiskey in a wee bit more detail. Okay, so we're going to start by thinking about the colour of our whiskey. Just hold it up towards the light. Okay. Now from colour, firstly you can hint at age. Typically older whiskies are going to be darker compared to the younger whiskies. And the second thing is the cask. And if you have the Glen Farkless, the space site, you've got a slightly richer redder colour in your whisky. Again, it's matured in European sherry cask. It's just going to make it a bit richer, a bit spicier in flavour. From the rest of them, it should be a bit lighter, a bit more golden. They're matured largely in ex-bourbon casks, which is going to give you a softer, sweeter cask. You can give it just a wee swirl as well. Step number two is the body. It's a bit like wine. You're just thinking for this line of droplets on your glass, which is going to flow down in what are called legs. So lots of legs flowing quickly. It's a light body, large droplets rolling slowly, heavy body whiskey. It's just going to be a bit heavier on your palate. Now the third step is often argued to be the most important. It's nosing. Uh, when you do this, leave your mouth slightly open. Okay, just vents off the alcohol, stops it shooting up your nose. Also, nose it a few times, so give it a first nose. Take it away, bring it back, maybe a couple of times. Okay. What's happening is you're just getting used to the strength. It becomes much easier to kind of kick out some more simple characters. Okay. Now, of course, the next step is actually to taste your whiskey as well. Unfortunately, I do quite a few tours during the day, so it's not very responsible for me to join you just yet. Okay. Um, what I will do though is give you a toast. In Scots Gaelic, you'd say slanjava, which means slanjava. So slanjava, everyone. Slanjava. So in terms of taste, give your whiskey a wee sip, let it rest on your palate, see what flavours you're getting. Okay. Now, if you would like some water with your whiskey, um, go ahead. Then there's also a bucket in the middle if you really don't enjoy it. Um, I won't be offended. But if you could please keep hold of your whiskey glass, because that's yours to take home at the end of the tour. Do you like it? So it's about 7 o'clock, so you can stay here right up until they're amazing. Now the first thing to really note in here is just behind me is the rest of the vibes collection. And it is specifically... Oh. <laughs> 